students um this is the second video attached to the november 27th uh, model builder class um so before we move on to the topic i want to cover on this one which is really about uh, parametizing um you know which is a, a fancier way of saying sort of building a model that anybody can use just like any other tool that anyone could open and, and input their own values into i just wanted to sort of Close the loop on something last time. Um, so remember I mentioned that when you string things together, they're automatically called intermediate data. Uh, I was still thinking back to older versions. Um, the way intermediate data is handled now actually is when this window is open, it all still lives here in um, the model builder. You can sort of see, right, uh, SEPTA regional rails, there's the buffer. There's the intersect that I made right here. Uh, there's the parks buffer. Um, and the way you would control it is just literally come up here and hit intermediate. So as long as the um, you know model builder window is open, if you hit intermediate and hit that, um, it'll disappear. And you can tell that by hitting sort of refresh. Uh, and there it is, it's gone. Uh, whenever you're done and your model's good, you can validate it. It means it turns it back to its original point and you can save it and you're good to go. All right, so next part though, this was cool. Um, and you know always helpful to have model builder as an option when you are kind of working uh, in Arc Pro, and it can be something you have open alongside it, and you can build a model. But what about those instances where you might want to not build a model that you have open like this, but build something that functions more like a tool? And you know how when we double-click something like Buffer, a customized, parametized tool window opens that asks us for a series of inputs that gives us in information about how to structure it and what to put in here. What if we could make our tool similar to that? You know, what we're going to be building is called a parametized model, uh, you know, that'll look like this. Um, this is sort of what the ultimate um, outcome will look like, is we can open a, a tool that'll talk to us more like this, right? You know, first shape you want to buffer, second shape you want to buffer, what features do you want to summarize, uh, what fields do you want to summarize, and what is sort of the output uh, that you'll do. So it's going to look like this, right? So this is kind of what we're building towards, a model that's all gray because nothing's been input to it but that has a lot of these interesting P's, right, which makes something a parametized model. Uh, and we're actually gonna sort of start from scratch when we're building it, um, just so I can show you another way uh, that you're able to grab data, um, or sorry, grab variables and put them in a model. So same as before, come to the toolbox in which we were working, come on down here um, and hit new and create a new model. You know, same thing, it just opens up like that. So scooch back down here. Uh, and this one, we're going to call it, um, you know, parametized. MB summary. So I'll right click and I'll open it. Same thing, I like to sort of drag it off by itself. All right. So what we're going to need to do here <coughs> is at this point, Though we could do it by dragging stuff in and then deleting um, the values that are attached to these shape files, this also gives us sort of an instructive way to load variables from scratch. So you don't just have to load this tool by you know dragging in data that's on your on your window or sorry that's on your layer contents. If you want to sort of create these blank ones, you also have the opportunity to just simply right click the map section um, more broadly and come on down here and hit variable. And the cool thing is, is that all the different variable types start to come up. And what's really fascinating here is you probably don't think about this, but throughout this semester, you have loaded so many different variables into so many different tools. I'm gonna take sort of just a brief pause here and open the tool window to remind you, and I've sort of been seeding this all semester, every single process that we do, even when we're right clicking or doing select by attribute, has a tool attached to it, right? If you come into data management and you were to come down to layers and table views, you could see select layer by attribute. And that same thing that we're so used to sort of accessing up here has a tool. And that tool is a bunch of variables. It has the features, the rows you want to select. Uh, one of the variables is you telling it the kind of selection type. Another variable is the expression that you want to load. 
And so in Model Builder, you have the freedom to build anything you want, any kind of input. Now, this can feel really overwhelming. So for today, let's just focus on two things, a feature layer and a feature class slash feature data set. Feature class is essentially, uh, think of that like a shape file or something from GeoDatabase. Um, but if I load that, the difference between having sort of a feature class and a feature layer is a feature class isn't going to give the option for a drop-down menu. Whereas a feature layer will because it's looking for a layer, right? It's looking for something that's been loaded into your map. Um, so I think feature layer is sort of a better thing because it's going to look at your table of contents to see what's there for user to drop in and give them the ability to look in your catalog versus feature class won't. Um, so we'll come here and we'll do feature layer. And there you go, right? It's going to come in. It's going to call itself sort of feature layer, uh, bing, bada, boom. But the other cool thing that we can start to do here is, um, well, actually, let me hold off for one sec. So we got feature layer. It's in here. We know we're going to want to do this twice, right? These are both sort of shapes that we're going to want to buffer. So we'll just come up here. We'll create another one, make it another feature layer. Oops. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to save our model. And I'm going to come over here to um, our toolbox, and I'm going to double click it, just like I did previously, and nothing happened. All right, so clearly we're not quite there yet, because this is what we should be looking for, right? We're building towards this uh, parameter model, which is something I pre-created so we can demo this. I want to double click it and have all my tools sort of pop up. And the way to do that, right, the way to create a tool window where your user can input things is you simply right click on any of the input variables that you have and you say parameter make it a parameter and notice if i do that if i right click on each and make it a p you see the p come up next to it i'll save it and now if i were to double click on it a tool window pops up it knows it's a feature layer so it wants to take any feature layer that i have and i can load it in now comes up emulating whatever it says here. So this is another way to start parametizing your model, right? Notice what I did here. I called it first shape you want to buffer and second shape you want to buffer. So we can actually kind of come in there by renaming each of these. You could say, I want to name you first shape, sorry, shape you want to buffer. And maybe I'll rename this one second shape you want to buffer and hit save. And now whatever we put in here, it's going to emulate here. So it gives that same instruction. So that's really, really kind of cool, right? You know, there's also sort of an info window that you have here. Same thing, you're able to come in. Um, well, this one we'll, we'll talk about a little bit when we actually make a, uh, when we look at the parameters in the window, you'll have the ability to sort of mess uh, with the information so you can give your user some insights about what they want to load. But for now, the simple thing is that sort of by renaming it, it'll match, um, you know, in the tool that you open, um, however you sort of structure the input. All right, so what do we want to do next? All right, well, we wanted to buffer things. Um, you know, I'm going to show you sort of how we could, um, you know, make the buffers more uh, nuanced too, right? Give our user maybe the ability <coughs> to select how big they want the buffers to be, which is a little different than uh, the way I built this model here, uh, but I think it'll be uh, instructive. So this is gonna be much the same we ran it before, right? We're gonna come into tools, we're gonna big in our buffers. All right, we know we're gonna bring it in twice. Beautiful, we got them. All right, so these don't need to be parameterized, right? Because we know we want to buffer them. So we're going to drag each in. And I want you to come in here, and we know we want to dissolve it. So I'm double clicking on the menu, going to dissolve. Um, but now things get, right, a little bit complicated. So before, 
we had just picked, you know, two um, miles. And it's possible, I'm going to sort of start with that, right? Two miles. I'm going to say two miles. Um, and maybe that's okay, right? Maybe when we try to show others this tool, it's a very specific tool, we say, that allows you to buffer something exactly two miles. But you may actually want to give your user some ability to control that as an input feature. And the neat thing is that any tool you create, or sorry, that you drag into Model Builder, by right clicking, you can go to Create Variable and any of the potential inputs that a tool requires can be parametized. So in this instance, I'm going to parametize the distance for either of them. Kind of shows up as a little feature. Let me sort of change my architecture here so things don't get too cluttered. Beautiful. So I've got it sort of set up like there. Um, and I'm going to right click on these and I'm going to parameterize them. Right? And so if I do that, I've got parameters. I'm going to save it. And now if I click on it, look at that, right? I have the ability to enter the distance. So that's really, really cool. Um, you know, maybe I want to use the same concept I did before. So I'll slightly rename this. I'll say, you know, distance. Um, for the first shape, and then maybe I'll call this one, you know, distance for the second shape. And I'll save them. And now when I open it, very cool, right? I've got the first shape I want to buffer, and then I can sort of pick it. Uh, now, because I entered that value too, it's always going to come up like that. Um, you know, if I don't like that, Right, I can come in and double click this and, and I can take this away. Right, it'll go back to being gray and it'll just be totally blank when it comes up. So same concept. Bing bada boom, first shape I want to buffer, distance, distance. So that's pretty cool. Um, maybe you want to organize it, right? Maybe we want it to be so that the first shape and then the distance for the first shape sits under there, right? That might be a better way to organize it. And the cool thing is, is once you start creating more and more variables or parameters by right clicking um, the tool and going to parameters, uh, this is where you actually have the ability to start to, to change. This is an easier way to change that label if you want, um, right? You know, I'm, I'm so used to um, just changing them like in Model Builder that I forget. You can leave it with like a shorter actual name and then create a, a label here that's a little bit longer. Um, you know, the cool thing is you can change the type of data that it needs. This is also where you can make something required uh, versus optional, right? You know, um, some tools, obviously, you need to have something required for buffer. But the more you have, the more that this can be sort of optional. Um, but this is also where I can sort of organize, right? So if I wanted first shape, I want a buffer. Let me drag up the distance for the first shape and put the second shape there. And now when I open it, um, oops, how do I got to save it? Now when I open it, first shape I want to buffer, distance to the first shape. Second shape you want to buffer, distance to the second shape. So that's really cool, right? You can right click any tool and you can create that same kind of parameter so anybody can, um, can sort of load the, the values. All right, so let's uh, move on. The next thing we need to do is uh, we'd load the intersect to bring them together. So we'll search intersect and we're going to drag intersect, uh, you know, in between these two sort of feature classes here. And then I'm going to pause really quick. Now, one challenge with this tool is as it's currently structured, these buffers, and this is going to become even more important once I connect them to the intersect, these buffers aren't sending anything anywhere. And that's an important small little oversight, right? When we did the first tool, because we were dragging and dropping directly from our 
catalog, it knew to go to our geodatabase. But we need a way to code this to be like, yo, these are intermediate data. We don't need them. Just make them live somewhere temporarily, um, and then they can go away. And we do this by a concept that's called memory. So I open the other tools so you can see. But what you're going to do is we're going to double click on each of those, and we're going to say memory. Um, this slash, again, I can never remember if that's forward or back. I think it's forward slash. Uh, and then we're going to put a name in. And what memory really is, is just like a temporary thing that is standard for anyone's computer. So if you share this with someone else in the class, they'd have their own memory file. Uh, something would create itself in memory called first buffer. And then the moment you would delete the tool or sorry, close the tool, that would disappear. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to right click on each of the buffers. And we're going to say memory, oops, memory. Um, slash first buffer, and then I'm going to click on the second one, and I'm going to say memory slash second buffer. All right, and now I can be ensured, um, you know, when I send this tool or share it to someone else, that they'd be able to run it because they also have something called memory on their computer. I don't need to worry that their name isn't Shay O'Neill or that they don't have the same sort of file paths as me. All right, so I'll drag these things into my intersect. They're my input features. I'll come here and I'll sort of same thing. It wants to sort of automatically make this that, but I want to say that thing doesn't exist on anyone else's computer, so this should be memory intersect. All right, so I'm getting pretty close to the same old tool, right? I've got a tool right now that behind the scenes will run buffers and then intersect them. I parametized a few things so that my, there we go, so that my uh, user can easily sort of input the shapes and the distances. So now the last thing I want to do is I want to sort of create a summary. Um, so I'll come here and I'll, I'll uh, oops, sorry, add uh, the summarize tool. Remember that, oops, oh, I've done it so many times that I've created all these summarizes that I didn't need. Go away. Get out of here. Go away. Go away. There we go. All right. So I've got my summarize. Um, you know, I, I clearly know that I'm going to connect um, this to it as sort of the summary feature. But remember, I'm also going to actually need to give my user the ability to load, um, you know, the kind of data that they would want to to summarize. So same thing we did before. I'll just come here, create a variable, make it a feature layer. I'll try something different this time. You know, give it the name. We'll call it like summary data, make it a parameter. Uh, then, you know, we can come into this properties here, you know, where we have sort of summary data and I can kind of label it, you know, say, oh, whoopsie, I got to make the label. Thought you could enter the label here, I guess you can't. I'll come here and give it a label. Hopefully this works. Uh, what data do you want to summarize? Make that label sort of down here. No? All right, cancel that. Let's just do sort of our old way of doing it and I'll, I'll sort of make an adjustment if I need to. Um, so we'll just sort of rename it here. Uh, you know, what data do you want to summarize? All right, <coughs> so I got what data I want to summarize as a parameter. Uh, and now, you know, the same as before, I can just start sort of connecting things to this. I know that this shape here is going to connect and that's going to be the polygons. I know that this is going to be the summary features. 
And maybe just as before, I'll end up creating a, um, you know, a variable here from parameter um, that is the actual sort of summary fields. I'll also make this a parameter. And I'll sort of rename that. Um, what fields do you want to summarize? And now I'll come save. I'll double click my tool and we are almost there, right? The first shape you want to buffer, the distance. The second shape you want to buffer, the distance. What data do you want to summarize? And what fields do you want to summarize within it? So very, very cool. So really that last piece is essentially this, right? This output feature class, which is which is what we want to come from this. Um, so, you know, I'm going to make this a parameter too. And again, we'll give this sort of a name that says uh, where to save final output. And now if I save all these things and I open back up my parametized model, I've got the first shape I want to buffer, and I've got the units down there, the second shape in the units. I got the data I want to summarize, the fields that I do, and I ultimately got something that says, where do you want to save the final data? And because I forgot to sort of delete this, you know, come in and take out this standard one, so it's totally blank when your user sees it. Maybe come here and make this a add to display, just to ensure that gets shown. Save it. And now let's actually run it, right? So let's delete this or at least close it go back to our map um, you know we'll get rid of this thing we created from a previous step in model builder and let's actually try to run this like a tool so now we'd say what do I want to buffer I mean let's buffer the regional rail stations and let's make that you know two miles not two feet two miles and then the second shape I want to buffer um, would be the uh, parks, and I also want that to be two miles. And, you know, what data do you want to summarize? I want to summarize the Philadelphia Blocks data, and I want to summarize the population, and I want to summarize the owner. So it's right emulating exactly what we did in Model Builder before, but it, it's an input form, looks like the tool. And, you know, where do I want to ultimately save this? Um, I'll just save it in my bottom builder folder, I'll say, you know, parametized output. And we'll run it. Um, you know, now it's going to run like a tool where it's sort of pending. It'll sort of walk through each of the steps that it's doing. I can open the details window in a second. Um, you know, you saw before, sometimes it takes a second, but it's telling you it's walking through each of the tools. Uh, hopefully we don't have one of those annoying uh, instances, um, you know, where the... Uh, um, where it doesn't sort of add to display, um, I mean, which has definitely happened before, but uh, we'll give it sort of a second here and, um, you know, when it loads, we'll, we'll open it up, we'll check it out, and then we'll close this video. Uh, and there you go, right, same thing. Added to my display, function just like a tool. You have the same information and attributes that you did previously through here. Super, super cool, right? We just built our own tool that you could theoretically send to anyone else uh, and it would be able to uh, to be able to run. So you know some of the last things you may want to do is you can come to properties and and edit and you can tell someone about the tool and you know tell them about what it's supposed to do. You can come into the parameters. This is what I was trying to do earlier and I was sort of struggling uh, for some reason. Um, I thought I was able to just come in and edit the fields. I have to sort of check why. Yeah, I guess some of them you can't. Uh, but these ones I can, right? I can edit if they're input or output. Um, you know, I can come in and um, ultimately come on over here and I can set if there's a specific environment for something. And I can come over here and I can set if there's like a default value you want to be able to have. This one's a bit more complex, but it's kind of cool. Like if you found a layer on your computer um, this becomes a little harder when sharing it with someone else's. Um, you know, you'd have to share that layer too. So it would output sort of like the kind of symbology that you want. Uh, but pretty cool, right? You have this this very neat sort of ability to, um, you know, put all kinds of information, um, you know, in your tool and control sort of the inputs and the outputs. 
uh, and ultimately build something for someone that is that is totally parametized and that they're able to open and run on their own.